nice day again today. Still waiting for all the cherry blossoms and stuff to come out in various places. And what did I read today? How about this one? This company's in the news again. This one says, China drone maker Yi Hang starts selling flying taxis on Taibao. Chinese drone maker Yi Hang Holdings has started selling its EH216S model flying taxi on Taibao for 2.39 million won or $332,060. Reuters check showed on Monday. Yi Hang gained safety approval certification from China's aviation authority in October. It makes you wonder whether or not people would actually buy this drone because with all the geopolitical, I guess, issues around the world, especially in the US, wanting to ban things like Chinese made drones, DJI, for example. And as well, just to show, I suppose, how much they're growing and their potential, it says early EVTOL aircraft deliveries boost Yi Hang's revenue. Chinese company prepares to certify the larger, longer range VT-30 EVTOL model. Early deliveries of its autonomous two-seat EH-216S EVTOL aircraft boosted Yi Hang's revenues in the fourth quarter of 2023, having secured type certification from the Civil Aviation Administration of China on October 13. The Guangzhou-based company is still awaiting clearance for the production certificate needed to advance to the higher volume series production, but managed to deliver 23 aircraft in the last three months of last year. According to Yi Hong, the CAAC review team has completed on-site inspections at its factory and all the required quality system files have been submitted for final review. The company told Financial Analysis it has now delivered 52 EH-216S aircraft to early customers under an airworthiness certificate issued by the Chinese regulator. And how much are they growing? It says total revenues in 2023 were 16.3 million, representing a 165% increase compared with 2022. Operating losses at RMB 296.3 million have been reduced by 2.5% as the company starts deliveries of the pilotless vehicles which has a retail price of RMB 2.39 million in China. As of December 31st, 2023, Ehang had cash reserves of RMB 334.1 million, with operating expenses totaling RMB 377.8 million last year. So again, the question is whether or not other countries would actually use these drones. Will this company be, let's just say, the next Boeing in terms of the drone passenger types of markets and at the same time are people comfortable i guess going in an autonomous drone yet but either way i guess this company is growing as well and it might continue that trend of how china dominates things like the drone market and while places like china seems to be excelling in terms of hardware growth and all that becoming a leader of sort when it comes to things like drone regulations in other places like north america it's often a lot of restrictions and as you know in the u.s they recently implemented things like mandatory remote ID. Is that gonna affect, for example, manufacturers, people who will not be able to use it unless you install all these devices and all that? So it's kind of interesting where in many cases, a lot of these big organizations, I guess they're ready to take advantage of it, I guess you could say. So it's kind of interesting reading this one where there's an organization in the US that consists of a lot of large commercial companies and immediately, they issued all these press releases on how to stay, I guess, legal. Like it says here, Commercial Drone Alliance and AUVSI released guidance on the FAA UAS remote identification rules. The Commercial Drone Alliance, an independent nonprofit organization led by key members of the commercial drone industry and the Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International, the world's largest nonprofit organization dedicated to the advancement of uncrewed systems and robotics has released a reference document providing guidance to the commercial drone industry on staying compliant with the Federal Aviation Administration's UAS remote identification rule. The FAA's discretionary non-enforcement policy for drone operators attempting to comply with the RID rules operating requirements but were unable to do so expired on March 16, 2024. A similar non-enforcement policy applicable to the RID rules manufacturer requirements expired in December 2022. The RID rule is now fully in effect and both manufacturers and operators should expect to see increased FAA enforcement of the rules requirements. So that could be a reason too, if you think about it, why it sounds like certain people are being targeted in terms of things like fines and all that. And as mentioned, they have their guides and all that to help manufacturers, commercial operators, and so forth, try to stay compliant. And it just makes you think too, 
even in reading all this stuff, even when I first flew a drone, it just doesn't seem like there's any organization that's not in it for themselves overall. Either they want to sell, for example, courses, programs, they only care about their own rights. It seems like overall, you're not going to have, I guess, much rights left by the end of it, huh? And no one's willing to actually do much about it. It should have been people who already had, let's just say, the experience, the presence, they should have been fighting against this, but it just seems like in many cases too, a lot of those people, they were bribed, like, oh, don't worry, we'll exempt you from this. It's only gonna affect those people. Most people are just like, okay. Or at the same time, again, most people are just selling like courses and so forth, like that's their main motivation. So that's a little unfortunate, huh? But is this gonna be the way? And it's kind of weird to think about too, where with all the restrictions and so forth in places like North America, you'd think they would be accelerating with things like drone production and all that, huh? But it seems like it's other countries like China. I still think the best example is that company actually, that zipline company, they actually had to take their operations elsewhere <laughs> to develop their business and then came back afterwards, huh? So whenever people tell me it's because of regulations and so forth, that's the reason why this is excelling and all that, I'd say it's the other way around. It's basically hindering the growth of the tech, in my opinion. And with that topic, actually, of not caring about people's rights and all that, this was kind of fascinating. As you know, recently in Canada, there was a ruling federally on how the usage of the Emergencies Act, it wasn't constitutional. And as a result, it seems like people are suing, let's just say, the government now. But it makes you wonder because they are appealing it. But in this case, it sounds like there's now a lawsuit of people suing the government for freezing their bank accounts because during that time, if anybody apparently, I guess, donated to that convoy, the protests and so forth, doesn't matter if it was one dollar, the government got the banks to freeze people's accounts and all that. So you can see here, I guess, in this lawsuit and people are saying here, Justin Trudeau has just been sued in the Ontario Superior Court of Justice for ordering the search and seizure of Canadian bank accounts and invoking the Emergencies Act. And you can see all the names here too, in terms of the defendants, where it makes me wonder, can you actually do this? Like sue individuals in the government versus let's just say the party and so forth? Cause yeah, it has things like what Justin Trudeau, Christia Freeland, David Lametti, Dominic LeBlanc, Bill Blair, etc., etc. And a little bit more details about the lawsuit, it says on February 14, 2022, the Emergencies Act was invoked, which ultimately resulted in searches and seizures of the bank accounts of many Canadians, including the plaintiffs. The invocation was held by the federal court to be unreasonable and ultra-virus, while the regulations and economic order were unconstitutional and in breach of Section 2B and Section 8 of the Charter, respectively. And it says the events in the within action constitutes one of the largest and most egregious collective breaches of charter rights in the history of Canada. The scope of the unlawful searches and seizures was astonishingly broad, disproportionate, ill-conceived, and contrary to the core constitutional values of all Canadians in our free and democratic society. Again, I wonder how this is going to work where if they're appealing it, let's just say they won, doesn't that make all these, I guess, lawsuits invalid as well? Like they can just appeal it saying, oh, they ruled it was perfectly fine for us to use this. I'm still in the train of thought personally, just like from the very beginning where it didn't make sense when you add up all the facts and all that. And at the same time, it's just crazy. If you guys remember, even I mentioned when you're reading the comments, people getting for example, their banks frozen or potentially arrested, trapped like with a horse and all that. Yet people commenting online because they're so extreme with a certain viewpoint saying, yes, this is like a hockey game, seeing your team win. Like, are you crazy, buddy? This isn't right in my opinion. I don't care, for example, if you disagree with someone's opinion, you shouldn't be able to go to that extreme lengths just to quote, silence them and so forth. But it makes you think again, just in terms of things like laws and regulations, do you care when you lose your rights in this way just because you want to, I guess, further validate your personal belief or you have some kind of commercial interest for the thing to go that way? In my opinion, it's dangerous. It doesn't matter what the topic is, but this is kind of a good example too. But again, who knows what will happen where if they do appeal it and win, again, I don't see how that's going to be successful overall, but I guess people are just doing it because they have a chance, I guess, of winning in that case too now, huh? I guess the interesting thought too is, let's just say in the future, their appeal fails, this sticks in terms of saying it was unconstitutional and all that. 
What exactly would make someone happy in that regards if you were someone that was affected in this way, like your bank accounts and stuff got frozen? What exactly is the type of repercussion that you would want to, I guess, make yourself satisfied in terms of the end result, for example? See you guys later.